Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be doing a video on Mariology. This is going to be the parthood relation, and this is just going to be the very basics of Mariology. Mariology is going to be a part of ontology, ontology being the study of things that exist, Mariology being the study of the way that things are parts of other things. In this video, we're just going to cover the generally uncontroversial basics of Mariology, and hopefully in a future video, we will take a look at some of the more advanced and controversial ideas. Quick admonition, as I said, this is a basic introduction to Mariology. If you want more information, I would check out Mariology in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. There's a lot of different people that have different ideas about Mariology, so to really take one specific first source wouldn't be too good. It's nice to have a compilation such as the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy to really understand where all of these disparate and different positions are coming from. With that out of the way, let's get started. So, Mariology, as I said, is going to be the study of parts and the parthood relationship. Well, what do we mean by that? You can have parts that are attached or parts that are detached. The handle of a cup would be an attached part. The remote to a TV or a stereo system would be a detached part. You can have parts that are functionally salient or parts that are arbitrarily demarcated. The handle and the remote would be functionally salient, while your slice of pie and my slice of pie would be arbitrarily demarcated. You can have self-connected parts and disconnected parts. The handle of the cup, the piece of your pie, or the remote to the TV, because I'm pressing it and it's sending signals to the TV, would be self-connected, while the knife in a silverware set would be disconnected. You can have homogeneous parts and gerrymandered parts. Homogeneous parts are things like the handle of the cup, your piece of pie, the remote to the TV, or the knife, while a gerrymandered part might be the ball is part of the things that I have in my bag. You can have material parts and you can have immaterial parts. Material parts would be things like the handle of the cup, your piece of pie, the remote to the TV, the knife in the cutlery set, or the ball in the bag. An immaterial part might be the area above a part of the table or part of the living room, the example of immaterial parts. You can have extended parts or unextended parts. Extended parts are going to be things like the handle of the cup, your piece of pie, the remote to the TV, the knife in the cutlery set, the ball in the bag, the area above the table, while unextended parts are going to be things like points on a perimeter. And finally, you can have spatial parts and you can have temporal parts. Spatial parts are going to be things like the handle on the cup, your piece of pie, the remote to the TV, the knife in the cutlery set, the ball in the bag, the points on the perimeter of the area above the table. Temporal parts are going to be things like the first act of a play. There are some other kinds of things that we might mean when we say the word part, but those are the generally basic and uncontroversial ones that we're looking at. Because we're covering the basics here, those are the only ones we will look at in a future video. Maybe we'll get into some more of the controversial uses of the word part and how that applies to Mariology and the parthood relation. For now, we are going to move on to kind of the basic principles of Mariology and how those are used with the parthood relation. So, parthood is reflexive, transitive, and anti-symmetric. If you don't know what those words mean, we're going to cover them a little bit here, but if you're confused, you should check out my video on properties of relations. That is going to mean that parthood is a partially ordered relation. That's what we call a reflexive transitive anti-symmetric relation, just as we might call a reflexive transitive symmetric relation an equivalence relation. We're going to represent parthood with PXY. That's just going to mean that X is a part of Y. So when we say parthood is reflexive, we are meaning that parthood is the kind of relation where for all x, x is going to bear the parthood relation to itself, so all things are going to be a part of themselves. This may seem a little counterintuitive, but if you're looking for that more intuitive version of parthood, hang on, because we're going to get to it in another type of relation that's part of Mariology. You can also have transitive. Transitive is going to be a property of parthood. If x is a part of y and y is a part of z, then x is going to be a part of z. 
If a proton is part of a nucleus, and a nucleus is part of an atom, then a proton is going to be part of an atom. Finally, parthood is an anti-symmetric relation. This is a tricky one. That means if x has relation r to y and y has relation r to x, then x and y are identical. Basically, the only way two things can be parts of each other is if they're in fact the same thing. Now, there's some other relations involved in Mariology other than just the parthood relation that we need to understand that can be defined in terms of the parthood relation. One of them is equality. X bears the equality relation to Y, if and only if, X is a part of Y and Y is a part of X. We'll represent that as EQXY is, by definition, X is a part of Y and Y is a part of X. The proper parthood relation, this is the relation I was talking about earlier, that has that more intuitive sense. X bears the proper parthood relation to Y, if and only if X is a part of Y and Y is not identical to X. We're going to define that as PPXY is, by definition, X is a part of Y, and it's not the case that X is identical to Y. Note that we use that kind of different form of negation. This is the sentence negation here, because what we're not saying is that not x is identical to y. We're saying it's not the case that x is identical to y. Check out my video on Mein Young's Jungle if you were confused by that. You also have the proper extension relation. This is just going to be opposite of proper parthood. x bears the proper extension relation to y, if and only if y is a part of x and y is not identical to x. We'll represent that with P, E, X, Y is by definition Y is a part of X, and it's not the case that X is identical to Y. If you're confused as to why this is different from the proper parthood relation, note that we've switched the Y and the X in the second part of our definition. The overlap relation. X bears the overlap relation to Y if and only if there's some Z that is a part of both X and Y. That's going to be O, X, Y is, by definition, there exists some Z such that Z is a part of X and Z is a part of Y. Underlap relation, finally, is X bears the underlap relation to Y, if and only if there is some Z that both X and Y are a part of. We will represent that as U, X, Y is, by definition, there exists some Z such that X is a part of Z and Y is a part of Z. Now, those were the kind of basic, uncontroversial pieces of Mariology. However, there's a lot more to Mariology that we're not going to be able to get to in this video, and we'll do in a future video. But it's important to get a sense of them. They're going to be things like decomposition principles. These are going to be principles that go from the whole to the parts. These are things like all things that have proper parts must have at least two. Interesting idea and composition principles that go from the parts to the whole. An example of this might be there's always a mariological sum of any two parts. This in particular is going to be important when we take a look at the mariological ontological argument for the existence of God, because it's going to rely on a composition principle in order to get it off the ground. So if you disagree with that composition principle or your Mariology doesn't include that, you're not going to be convinced by that argument. That was the basics of Mariology. Watch this video and more at Carneades.org. Stay tuned for the next video on the Mariological, ontological argument for the existence of God, and stay skeptical, everybody.